Last time, we created a generator for producing tetrominoes. In this video, let's add it to our state module. Let's start by opening up state.elm and importing random, exposing generator and seed. Next, let's go ahead and add two fields to our state record. Seed, which we'll use to keep track of the seed for generating new values and bag, which will be the queue of tetrominoes that we'll get next. Let's also define a value, initial seed, which we'll set to 42 for now. Next, let's update our default state. We'll generate our bag and next seed. Generator, we'll take in our bag generator from the tetromino module and our initial seed. Then our falling tetromino is going to be the first element in the bag. The compiler doesn't know that this bag is not empty, so it returns something called a maybe, which says it is either the first element of this list, or if the list is empty, it is nothing. We know the list is not empty, so we'll hand it off to a function called with default, which will produce a default value if our thing is nothing. We will go ahead and set the default value to i, knowing that it will always result in something. Next, we will define our bag prime, which is the rest of the list. We'll use the drop function, which takes in the number of values to remove from the list. We only want to remove one element from the bag. Finally, we can swap out our J with the falling tetromino, specify our seed and bag, and let's load up our state module now. There it is. Notice we no longer have a J piece falling. Next, let's go ahead and add in rules for getting the next tetromino. We'll start by writing a function called check bag, which will take in a state and produce a new state that has a bag that is not empty. If the state's bag is not empty, we can simply return that state. Else, we need to generate a new tetromino bag. We will do this using the seed from our state. Finally, we will produce a new record that is exactly like state except the bag will be our new bag and the seed will be our new seed. Now that we have this, we can write a function called next tetromino. This function will take in the current state, add the currently falling tetromino to the board, pull out the next tetromino from its bag, and then produce a new state with that piece falling from the top of the board. The first thing we need to do is ensure that our bag is not empty. We will create a state prime by calling check bag on our state. We will then define our next falling piece. This is going to be the first element in state prime's bag. Again, we know this bag is definitely not empty, so we'll just hand it off to with default with a dummy value. And then, to put it at the top of the board, we need to shift it by our starting shift. Our next bag is our current bag with the first element dropped. And our next board comes from adding the currently following tetromino to our current board. We also need to check if the tetromino we just added clears any lines, so we'll pass this off to clear lines. Remember, clear lines returns a pair with the number of lines cleared and the next board. So we'll need to pattern match here to get the next board. Finally, we will produce a state that is exactly like state prime, except falling will be our next falling tetromino, bag will be our next bag, and board will be our next board.
Okay, now let's add this to our check tick function. We'll start by pulling out the values we previously defined. We will have a shifted tetromino. and the next shift time. Then we need to determine if the shifted tetromino produces a valid board. We'll use boards is valid function on our shifted tetromino and the current board. Then we'll define a state prime. If it was valid, then we want state prime to be a record exactly like our state, except our falling piece is the one we've shifted down. Else, we will produce the state which results from calling next tetromino on our current state. Finally, we will update the next shift by producing a new record, which is exactly like state prime, except next shift is updated. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and reload our state module. And I'm going to fast forward the gameplay a little bit. This is pretty sweet. We actually have something that very closely resembles Tetris. In the next video, we will continue by adding some polish to our game.